In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I paint Magakin. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be painting Otto Glott. Uh, he stands on top of his brother. Um, he's one of the Glottkin, he's part of one big model. Um, and it's a really good model to show you how to paint Noble. So I started off with a black primer, and then we're going to go over the top with white ink. Uh, this is Liquitex Titanium White Ink to create a zenithal highlight. And we want to really focus in on like the upper upper stomach, the chest and uh, the, the head to really bring the focus into those areas. And obviously we're going to do the front and the back of the model in this. It just helps to lay down where we're going to put our highlights uh, and give a bit of um, you know depth and shadow to the model before we start putting any colours on. Once we've done that, we're going to take scale 75 pale skin. Uh, this is a really nice sort of like pale, sick skin tone. And I'm going to put some into this little mixing tray and add in some airbrush thinner. Probably, well, you can see on the video, probably quite like three parts airbrush thinner to one part uh, pale skin. And I'm going to mix it together until we get into like a, a glaze consistency, you can see here. And I'm going to put that through our airbrush. Because it's quite thin, we have to be careful not to overspray. If we do overspray, we get this like spider webbing effect, which you don't want. So we're just going to apply this all over to the skin, a couple of thin coats, and it's going to create a really subtle effect. So nothing too drastic, but it's just going to give that uh, the skin a little extra tone there. I've turned the exposure on the camera down so that you can see because it's quite white on the, on the screen. And now we're going to use Karaberg Crimson. This is one of the Citadel shades. I'm going to put this through the airbrush. And what we're going to do with this is sort of spray it off to one side, like around the edges of the model, around his skin, to start creating this sort of bruised up looking, uh, like sort of sickly skin effect. And we're going to do that around the edges or on the sides. And then we're going to do the same with Drucci Violet. Uh, we want to leave sort of the upper chest part. So you don't want to hit that full on with these shades. You want to kind of just focus on the areas uh, around the center, but not the center of the model itself. What this will do is draw the eye into the middle of the model and make it look like his stomach is like a really sickly uh, sort of shine to the middle of the model. It just makes a nice effect. So we're going to go around the model and hit it with the Drucci Violet all around the outside. And then we're going to use a Thonian camo shade and we're going to pick out some of the other areas that we haven't hit yet. Uh, we can go over some of the previous shades as well with this and the because they're quite thin and translucent paints uh, you can see the other colors shining through and it creates like a nice mottled effect on the model as well so our skin's already looking quite good nice and bruised and horrible um, now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you quickly all the different base coats so start with the armor uh, we're going to use Death Guard Green. Uh, for these base coats, I'm not going to show you how to do a base coat, they're pretty simple. Uh, then we use Contrast uh, Wildwood on the wood of the staff. Uh, then we use Lead Belcher on any metal parts. Uh, we're going to use some of the metal parts and use Balthazar Gold on those to create like a bronze colour. And then we use Dryad Bark on any leather straps. And Pallid Witch Flesh on any sort of like wraps and his cloth parts. Then we're going to take Vlupus Pink and Contrast Medium. I'm going to mix these together on the wet palette in about a one to one ratio. Uh, the Vlupus Pink is a really nice colour, but it is quite intense um, and we don't want to completely blow out uh, the rest of the skin for the next part. So we mix this into like a one to one ratio. So it's kind of like a, a thin wash consistency. I'm going to start painting this into any areas like these, like, uh, you know, like peeled away patches of skin or like, I don't really know what they are really, like horrible gross sores on his skin. Uh, so yeah, we're going to paint those into those. And also we're going to paint it into any, uh, anywhere where the skin meets another material. So like this metal part, for example, or around like the leather straps, uh, where the armor meets the skin. Um, and what this is going to do is just going to help to find the skin and uh, the other areas, so as being separate different things.
I can see. We're, now what we're going to do is we're going to build up on that. Uh, so you can go around, do any boils with that kind of color, any recesses, and just, yeah, really bring it out. Next, we're going to use Game Air Sun Yellow. And I know this is a air paint, but we're going to use it with a brush because it's quite um, vibrant. Uh, so it goes on really nicely. And what we're going to do is going to just pick out any little like boils or um, some of the areas where the skin's peeled away, like the sores. And it, this just adds a bit of extra sort of gross contrast to the mix. So it's looking pretty horrible. Uh, probably the last thing we'll do for the skin is we're going to take some more pallid witch flash and we're just going to add some little white dots onto these boils and into the sores uh, just give it like that like a you know like a white head of a spot effect just adds a little extra something to the grossness We're also going to uh, edge highlight the, the bottom of these sores where the skin is. Uh, it just helps to define the difference between the sore and the actual like outside skin itself. So I've painted the horns now with Corvus Black, uh, just a coat of Corvus Black. And we're gonna highlight those with Incubi Darkness. So all we're going to do is put some of that onto our wet palette and then just paint the top half of the horns. Uh, Incubi Darkness blends really well with Corvus Black. Then we're going to add some Frenrisian Grey and we're just going to edge highlight the front of the horns, probably from like halfway up, up to the top of the horn. There you have it. Those are all our base coats. So now we're going to add some weathering. So first up, Streak and Grime. We're just going to use a cheap synthetic brush and apply this to basically any area of the model which is not skin. Uh, it doesn't matter if it gets onto the skin a little bit. Uh, we can always clean it up later with some enamel thinner, but we don't want to purposefully get it all over the skin. Once we've done that, we're going to use our enamel thinner. Uh, I like to put some into a little one of these mixing trays um, and come in with a cotton bud, soak that in enamel thinner, and then we're just going to gently roll it across all the areas that we've hit with streak and grime. And what this is going to do is reduce down the streak and grime that we've put on. And once we've done that, we're going to use the clean side of the cotton bud and we're just going to roll that across those areas again and this is going to mop up any excess that's uh, that's lying around but it's going to leave behind this horrible nice streaking residue if there's any areas where you want to clean up a bit extra you can come in with a paintbrush again I use a synthetic brush uh, to add some of the enamel thinner to those areas dry off that brush and then come in and wick up those areas where you've put the thinner and that'll just pull the uh, the dirt and grime away. If you find it's not coming away, just try a bigger cleaner brush. We can do that whenever, wherever we want. Mainly I'm doing that on the skin areas, especially in like recesses where this stuff tends to pull. Now we're going to add some bright rust. So I use Troll Slayer Orange. I've got this, this part which um, I use specifically for this. Don't dip your... Uh, brush straight into this after you've been using it on the streak and grime because it will ruin the paint um, but I use it specifically for this so we're just going to get some on our brush uh, whilst the the thinner is still wet and what this is going to let us do is carry on working with the paint whilst it's still wet dabbing it on and when it dries it's going to make a nice crusty bright rust now we're going to use AK dark rust deposits and we're just going to apply this um, from the cap of the paint, uh, you get this thick, thicker sort of sludgy paint. Um, and we're just going to dab this onto the model 
uh, to create some like crusty rust in certain areas. Next up, we're going to use Neolac Oxide. Uh, same thing again. I use this this pot specifically for this, so don't dip your use your brush that you've been using on the thinner uh, with this pot if you're planning on using it on anything else. Um, and this with this, we're just going to splat some onto certain areas. Again, because the thinner is still wet, we can mop up any if we need to. Uh, it won't set like a, a normal paint will. Now we're going to use some MIG Dark Streaking Grime. And with this, we're just going to add some vertical stripes down the model uh, to create some darker, different mottled colors on the model. And after we've used that, I'm going to come in with a cotton bud and just mop up some of the excess that we've got lying around on the model at the moment. The reason we do this is because if we don't mop up the excess, we end up just obscuring all the details. And we want the model to still be detailed, but dirty. Now we can use a Slimy Grind Dark, which is one of the MIG streaking products. And I love this paint. Uh, it's like this dark, slimy green. Uh, and we're gonna apply this to any of like the, the dripping pus sort of areas. I don't know what you would call them. These horrible bits here um, that's dripping out of, I, I quite assume that's like an intestine. Gross. Um, I'm gonna apply some, you know, coming out of different areas of the model. Um, yeah, like in streaks coming down from crevices and cracks in his body. Uh, and then we're going to leave that on there for a minute or two and then come in with the cotton bud again and just roll that over there just to um, take off some of the excess, but still leave this horrible slimy residue on the model. Uh, we're going to leave it. We're not going to clean it up on the like the drips of like pus coming out of the the intestine thing, but just from like where we've left it on the model. Because this is an enamel product, what you can do is if you've gone a bit heavy on an area, come back in with a brush and the enamel thinner and just use that over a certain area and clean it up a bit more. It's one of the benefits of using an enamel product over acrylics is that you can do this and then uh, clean up afterwards. So now I've just given the model a quick blast with a hot hair dryer and this is what it looks like. It's looking pretty good. Uh, there's just a couple of things that we're going to do to really make it pop now. The first, we're going to need to take a really thin brush. Uh, you don't have to use a thin brush, but I find it's really useful. So this is a, a 10 slash zero from Rosemary Co. So it's really, really mega fine brush. And we're going to take Nolan Oil. Uh, you could also use like a black oil paint and that would work too. Um, and we're going to load up this brush and we're effectively going to uh, pin wash this model. Um, so basically, what that means is we're going to use this black and we're going to one basically one line at a time line any armor sections or areas where we want to create an extra bit of definition between two parts so for example it could be uh, gaps on armor panels it could be around the metal parts between like the leather and the skin between the skin and something else or even to you know different parts of the skin um, just anywhere where you want to create some extra definition. Like this. The last part, we're going to use some Nurgle's Rot. Uh, I love this paint. It's a really, really useful paint if you just use it sparingly. Um, and all we're going to do with this is uh, add some to any of these like drip sections that are coming down off the intestine thing, um, the bit that's coming in under his arm as well, um, and any of like the like the sores on his skin, it just adds a little bit of extra like corruption and filth to the model. Thank you. 
This is, uh, obviously this model hasn't got a base because he is part of the Glockkin, which is a big model. He's standing on his brother's shoulders. Uh, if you were to do want to do something like a base on this, what you could do is look at how I do my, um, my Black Templar or my Ultramarines bases and just follow something similar to that. Um, it's up to you really. I like to do really splattered muddy bases. Um, but yeah, it's, it depends on how you want to do them yourselves. And there we have it. I hope you enjoyed the video guys. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps. I've put a couple of affiliate links in the description below as well for different products that I use. Uh, if you click on those, it does give a little kickback to my channel, which helps obviously support me and what I do. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Thanks very much guys. See you later.